one. I've had a few messages from people on Instagram and things like that asking me how my new snails are doing because a few videos ago I actually unboxed a few new little snail friends. They're all doing amazing and I think people just wanted some updates but you know honestly there aren't really any updates. They haven't got any bigger. I don't really put them in a new cage yet because they're not any bigger. So I just thought I would actually do a meet all of my snails video because I have a lot of snails now in my life and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> so before I get into the video I just want to let you know that I've made a new Twitter account. It's just the same as on here, uh, Jade's Jungle. I also have an Instagram and a TikTok. Ooh, I need to make a thing for Twitter. So if you could go follow me on that, I'd be appreciated. That's going to be the place where I sort of... You know, I'll just show occasional photos or videos and stuff, but that's mo it's mostly going to be sort of like opinion based or like facts and stuff like that. I have a lot of opinions, so you'll either enjoy that or you'll hate me. So um, good luck with that one, I suppose, uh, to myself. I don't know. I have no fear of being controversial, so if you really want to know what I think, then go follow me on there because I'm going to say whatever the hell I want. I recently made a video with Ebs as well on her channel. Um, she does a tarantula YouTube series. So if you could be very kind to go check that video out please and everybody else's video in the YouTube series. I actually um, show Susie, my Lassie Adora Parablana who is in this tank here. So if you're interested in any updates from Susie, she's in that video. I'm also in this video at the end going to announce the winners from my last video of Richard from Northern Exotics giveaway. So stay tuned for that. I'll put the timestamp in as well if you want to know who the winner is then you can go skip to that if you don't really care about snails. <laughs> we'll start off with the first snails that I ever got. So I started with Fullica snails. I knew they didn't get too big, they didn't necessarily need a heat mat. When I say need, they probably do okay with a heat mat, like they'll do better because you've got that reassurance that the correct temperature is there, whereas if you keep them in just a random room, it can fluctuate, you know, in winter it can be too cold and stuff. So if you have a house that's over 20 degrees, which some people generally do, then that's fine, but a lot of people do not have a house that is over 24 degrees constantly, even in winter. So a lot of times you do actually end up having to buy a heat mat anyway for a fullica. But that was one of the reasons why I personally chose to go for a fullica first, is because I thought, well, I won't have to buy the heat mat and the thermostat, which actually was the main bulk of the cost of the setup. But like I say, I ended up buying one anyway, so it actually turns out that I don't really want to keep fullica anymore. I mean, I love the little snails I have at the moment, but they're just so unhealthy. I don't know if I've just been really unlucky with it, but they should be, you know, a huge snail and they are not, they're like that big. Being in all the Facebook groups that I am, because I like to go in a few different ones because different groups will have different opinions and I like to know all of the opinions to form my own. I don't really see any snails that are bigger or healthier than mine. They all kind of look the same, they all kind of look small. You know, I'll see random huge rescue ones, don't know where they came from. <laughs> They're supposed to live up to 10 years, I always say this, but the majority of my snails only live up to about three and it's just not what I was expecting or really desiring in a snail. I wanted one to get, you know, at least the size of my hand and I wanted them to live for several years. I don't necessarily want to keep small flicker snails that just keep dying on me. I just want to clarify as well that my hands are thoroughly washed so there are no you know, perfumes or soaps or oils on my hand at this moment in time. You could use gloves if you wanted, however I do personally believe that there is nothing that is going to harm them when I'm holding them without a glove and I also do sort of have the mindset as well that gloves, if I were to use a new pack of gloves every time I handled them, it would be very wasteful. So that's why I personally choose not to, but you can absolutely, of course, if you think it would be very harmful to your animals to use your hands, even if they are washed, go, go right ahead, fill your boots. Having wet hands also dilutes anything that could sort of be being processed in the current moment, you know, like your hands are always producing oils and stuff. So that just dilutes anything that could possibly be on your hand, so I don't think it's dangerous or negative for them in any way, as long as you are being safe. This little guy is Lord Fardquad. He is one of the biggest jade snails that I have. He does have white flesh, but he's actually asleep at the moment, so he's not coming out. So as you can see, I've wet the shell, which, you know, does bring out sort of the colour and the shine and stuff. What you'll see when snails get to about three years, especially Fulica, is that their shell might become a bit more white, a little bit more scratched. That's completely normal and just putting a piece of water on like this gives them another nice shiny shell so that you can show them off to like cameras and take photos and stuff. This is Debbie. She is the 
Did I call the last snails a jade? They're a jadatsi. This is a jade where they have a dark shell and a white body. You can see at the front here, she's had a recent massive growth spurt, which is very exciting. I actually put calcium cakes into their enclosure and they ate it so much more than they would do with cuttlefish. So I'm always now going to recommend calcium cakes alongside you know, cuttlefish and stuff because they just seem to use that more and have had a massive growth spurt. So um, it's more obvious on her because obviously she has a dark shell so you can see where it's been but all of them have also had a growth spurt. And Debbie's coming out now so maybe I'll wait until she pops her out. I do say she and he, um, just randomly really. They are hermaphrodites so they don't actually have any gender and you could use she or he or or uh, neutral pronouns. Yeah, it's completely up to you, like you can... There she is! So cute! This is Coco, as you can see, you can sort of, because this little snail here has more darker tones, you can sort of see their shell growth there as well. They are also a Jadatsi, just like Lord Fardquad, and I can tell them apart because one is, you know, just a bit smaller and this one's more stripy, so I know by looking at them. Who is who? So that's all the Fulica. The scientific name is actually Lysacatina Fulica. So this is a Lysacatina reticulata, which is just a slightly different species found in a different part of Africa. They are still Lysacatina, so they can actually hybridize, so you must keep them separate to other Lysacatina. These are currently my biggest snails. This one here is called Ben, specifically. And these are actually only sub-adults, they're not fully grown yet, they're not fully mature. Um, I've got loads of new growth showing here, um, so they're actually really, really big. And once she comes fully out, he actually spans like literally the whole length of my hand. He's getting really big. If I can show you his shell from the side, like, he's getting huge. And I absolutely love this species. I've had no problems with them. I know I had like a big rant about Fulica, and I always do whenever I show the Fulica. But like just genuinely, like I just do not think they make very good giant African land snail pets. If you're gonna get a giant African land snail, a thousand percent would recommend these guys. They're absolutely amazing. I love these guys so much. Hands down, one of my favorite species, or was my absolute favorite species for a long time. Mm, kind of joint top two favorite species now, but this one is definitely one of the top two. But look how pretty he is. Hello. That was me trying to do an impression of the aliens from Toy Story. <laughs> Bill was actually already awake in the container, so um, I know it's daytime right now and these guys are typically classed as nocturnal. I find that my snails just kind of wake up as and when, like I'll always find one just awake in the middle of the day. Like right now, this guy, little Bill, was awake. This is a normal reticulata. Ben was in fact an albino kind of morph, that's why he was all white. But this guy has a little black head and it's very cute. And the older he gets, the more the black kind of intensifies and spreads across his body, which I find really interesting. Um, a lot of people often message me because their snail will do funny things like this with their foot and be like, oh my god, my snail's foot is swollen. It's not that it's swollen or anything's wrong with it, it's just, it's just coming out of its shell and it's just a funny little... They're just like bulging out a bit because that's just how they're currently resting, I suppose. Try not to freak out about your um, snail's flesh, but if you are worried, definitely go get it checked out by a vet. Because to be honest, if you message me about um, flesh problems, it's not a lot I can do. That's kind of a um, medication issue, I think. Oh look, there's a little tiny baby woodlouse on his neck. Can you see that? I always think Bill has like a really long face and he looks kind of like a horse. Reminds me of a horse, there's that little woodlouse look crawling down his face. But Bill is really sweet, Bill likes to like have a little, little stroke, look at him. He enjoys that, ooh, yo. You can tell that he likes it or else he'd be putting his eye stalks in or be trying to pull away but he actually leans into it. So there you go, a friendly snail that enjoys having a little bit of a pet. It can seem like you're anthropomorphizing them, but a snail um, for like courtship and stuff will sort of know intertwine with each other and sort of gently like caress each other I suppose. 
So when you're actually doing like stroking a snail like that, you're showing affection and they understand that affection, which is why they like being pet and is not necessarily anthropomorphizing them. I am washing my hands between the snails as well, by the way, just to keep on top of any oils on my skin and also not to cross contaminate between the two boxes. But obviously that's not on the camera because I stop recording go and do it and come back. So these are Sublina Octana, which is a unicorn snail. Now these are very, very tiny, minuscule species of snail. Um, they won't be in this pot for very long. However, I only got, you know, a few little ones. So once the breeding colony sort of expands and there's more of them, what I'm gonna do is transfer it into a larger container. But just because they are so small, I only had a few of them at the time, I wanted the colony to sort of become established before putting them into anything larger. There's a snail on this piece of carrot. You see that? That is how tiny they are. They are minuscule, minuscule little tiny, tiny snails. These don't have an individual name because no idea how I'd keep track of all of them since they're kind of gonna be a culture. But Jess actually suggested we call them the curly pastas because they look like little twirly pastas. So welcome the curly pasta, the pasta pots. The babies are so tiny, but I do have, um, so it's been a few weeks, I'll actually zoom in on this, little babies already come in that I can actually visually see, which is really exciting, let me just, so this one and this one would have been sort of what I unboxed the other week, but this one down here is actually a new baby, but you can already see that the baby, you can sort of see it. So they do grow and lay eggs quite quickly and colonise quite well. Now the next snails I want to talk about, I'm actually just going to put an overlay on top of the screen so that you can see them, but I'm not going to be holding them. Um, you'll know why for the aquatic snails, because they're in the fish tank and I'm not exactly going to you know, bring them out and show you. But I do have a nerite snail. <laughs> Unfortunately, I thought I would love nerite snails. I absolutely do not love nerite snails. Neville the nerite lays eggs everywhere and it's so so annoying to me because it's not even like you just gently scrape it off you literally have to get like um, a card or something um, I had a Stanley knife trying to scrape it off some driftwood still have eggs and marks on there even now even though I tried to carve it off with a Stanley knife like they're just really 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 stuck on there and it just looks really messy when there's loads of white dots everywhere so I will not be getting any more Nerite snails unless I get a snail specific tank um, or else I would definitely get more aquatic snails but one one Nerite snail is enough for me right now, thank you very much. It is also a zebra Nerite snail because I know there can be um, a few different ones. Bettina Coromandaliana, I think is how you pronounce the scientific name for them. I also have another snail called Peter who is a rabbit snail, hence the name Peter. I really like that snail, it doesn't lay eggs everywhere and I see it a lot and I think it's really cute so I'm quite happy with that snail. It is a Tello Melania but I don't actually know what its full species is, it's just a rabbit snail for me. So. Um, if anyone knows, let me know. Next is my predatory snail, which was kindly gifted to me by Ebbs and Sidex from the Invert Kingdom UK and Black Wolf Ebbs. It is very, very, very shy, and if I had it in my hand here right now to show it to you, it would not come out and you would just see it. Shall I try anyway? Maybe I'll get it. Well, I have this internal thing where I really want to show it off because it's such a beautiful and cool little snail, but at the same time, it's very, very sensitive and it's also very shy and secluded, so I don't like to get it out and take pictures of it when I know that it doesn't like it or it might stress it out even more because they are difficult to keep, I don't want to stress it out. So I'm always like, do I want to hold it or show you? No, I'm just, I've decided I'm not going to get it out, but I'll put in the clips that I took when I first got it. So sorry that it's not fresh clips, but um, I am just going to you know, do what's best for the little snail. So yes, predatory snail eats other snails, I think it's really cool. Actually, I'll get some of the feeder snails to show you. Just quickly grabbed one of the bigger ones that I could probably show on camera. So this is a white-lipped snail. You can tell because the front of the lip is white, as the name might suggest. But I also have brown-lipped snails, where it's brown. And um, I've got a few glass or garlic snails, as they're called, but they're like quite small, so I just got this little guy out. But yeah, they're just kept in sort of a garden snail setup, a typical garden snail setup. And um, I quite like them, I'm hoping to breed them. I could feed baby giant African land snails, but um, they tend to go for these more in people's experience, so that's what I've been trying. But if I do have a clutch of eggs, I might hatch them out and see if the predatory snail likes them. Uh, hopefully that was filming, because my screen just went black and I don't know why. If I wasn't filming, here is 
their new setup. I think it looks really good. Um, they've got, you know, a cuttlefish in there, they've got a calcium cake in there, branches to climb because they're an arboreal tree snail. I've got fake flowers, moss, little plant parts, leaf litter, um, decayed wood and stuff, you know, it's like a nice little home for them. I'm gonna pop them out now so you can see them. But I thought I'd show you the updated tank because all the other snails are in the same one that I've showed before, but except for these guys. Now, I've had a lot of questions of where I got them from, which is quite funny because whenever I've shown them, it's literally been in the title or the caption or in the video I've showed that they've come from Bugs and Bits but they are from Bugs and Bits. This one's got some new growth at the front so I don't really want to, you know, manhandle it too much. <laughs> but um, they are beautiful colours. I call these the Raspberry Ripple Snail because I don't actually know if they have a common name. Um, they're definitely not giant African land snails. They'll only get so this is a small juvenile at the moment. They'll probably get to about that big. Um, they don't get massive. Um, so they're definitely not a giant African land snail, but I don't know what else to call them. They are white with bright pink and purpley um, sort of stripes on them. Oh, they're so cool. When you get them in like a nice lighting and take a picture of them, they are so vivid and that's why I like to call them the raspberry ripple snail. So they don't actually have names sort of given to them yet because they both kind of look the same and when a snail grows its patterns kind of revolve around its shell so it can be hard to keep track of who is who based on the pattern as they grow. But um, one of them is going to be called Candy Floss once it's identified and one of them is going to be called Strawberry Lace because they reminded me of Little Sweets and um, for short that will be Flossy and Lacy. They are Lumicularia agathina. Uh, the raspberry ripple snail that I've just actually made up so don't call them the raspberry ripple snail unless we're gonna start a trend in which case very good. They came from Bugs and Bits however they weren't in stock on the website and when I did an order they actually kindly sent me a link to be able to add these on so if they're not in stock on the website because a lot of people have messaged me and been like oh they're out of stock like where else can I get them from I'm not sure where else you can get them from you'll have to shop around um, I just like Bugs and Bits and seen them on the website and wanted <laughs> wanted them. So these guys actually uh, might be in stock, you might just have to message them, um, uh, you know, it just depends doesn't it? Oh, she's coming out, hello. Um, I do have another one but um, I'm actually just going to leave it because I can't really see it from the top of this tank and I don't really want to dig through all the soil and take all the branches and stuff out and they kind of look almost the same <laughs> anyway so there he is coming out, very cute. They're quite shy but um, they're not that shy and they're supposed to be a little bit harder than giant African land snails or at least a little bit more sensitive or temperamental. I haven't found that at all. I found them to be exactly the same to be honest. They seem to be growing really well. The shell is so smooth and what's impressive to me is that they've definitely grown since I got them but I can't see where I got them. So what happens with a lot of snails is when you put them into a new environment they actually develop sort of a bump in their shell because it's growing different because it's new conditions. Which to me sort of says, you know, I'm keeping them in pretty much identical conditions to what Bugs and Bits was keeping them, which is really interesting and really quite an achievement, I suppose, which is nice to know. <laughs> oh, by the way, before I forget, that tank was the tarantula room tank as well, because um, if you wanted to know what that was, if you wanted one, then that is it. Um, these tanks here are Exoterra fornariums, but the lid is fully ventilated. Whereas the tarantula room one has sort of a, hold on, it's got watermarks from where I've like sprayed through the hole, but it's kind of like fully plastic with sort of a smaller mesh part. And then I've drilled holes around the side of the acrylic as well, which just keeps a really good humidity level for snails, whereas these don't, so that's why I have one of those. I used to, why am I like sort of, let's just sit back down if I'm gonna talk to you, Jesus. That for a praying mantis, I liked it for, what did I have in there? I had a pancake slug in there, she liked it. I've actually put her into a different one now. And shall I include the slug in this? I'm gonna include the slug. On an honorary snail. I'm really going off on a tangent, but the slug's right behind me, so I'm just gonna get it. So after saying that these don't really make sort of suitable tanks for snails, here we are. This is what my slug is in. Right. Um, I find that it keeps humidity really well because I actually include um, this kind of, ew, you can see like slime on it. This is a mesh netting, I think it's like window thing, but it's for a drainage layer, but it works well for keeping in a slug that doesn't have any bones and can fit through 
the ventilation holes. So I've got some more sort of super glued here. The super glue is absolutely safe. It's aquarium safe, so um, it's good in the humidity and stuff. She's eating all the leafy greens, but there's still a bit of carrot and potato in there for her, and all of the gunk around the side is beautiful. Uh, she's got lots of leaf litter in there, we've got branches and stuff. Hello, Nutella, where are you? I actually keep another tank on top of this one. The other tank does have feet, so she does have ventilation, and she also has ventilation across the side. But by keeping the other tank stacked on top, which is just another one of these exact same tanks, um, it retains a lot of the humidity. Nutella was actually already out and about. That's like what I was saying earlier about how um, sometimes I come in and I find them awake anyway. Um, yeah, Nutella was actually already awake. She's kind of bunched up at the moment, but when she sort of wakes up, she does span my entire hand. She is a giant slug. Like She really, truly does live up to her name. And if we give her a few moments to spread across my hand, she would be... Bloody massive. So I hear a lot of stories about how these are really, really thick, super glue slime, really sticky, absolute nightmare to like touch or anything. Never found that with Nutella personally, but that's just my own individual slug. So if you get these, just be warned that they might, I don't know, do that to you. Nutella always seem to be sort of, not friendly, but like, Desensitised. She's been desensitised, I suppose. Like, she doesn't mind being handled. She doesn't find it scary. She doesn't secrete any, you know, really stick with liquid super glue or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, there's Nutella, the pancake slug, who made an honorary appearance. Um, because I went on a tangent about tanks. I don't know. But, yeah, I'm glad she got to be in this video. Time for the final snails who are behind me, so I'm going to have to... Uh, out the way. Here are the next ones. They're so cute. This is the snail that I said was sort of joint, my favourite top two. This is an Archicotina marginata ovum, which is different to a Lysacotina because an Archicotina is actually sort of a different species of snails entirely. It's not sort of related snails. And these are slow growing snails that live a very long time. So. These can take up to three years to be fully mature and um, obviously they take a lot longer to grow to the full size as well. You can actually see just back here the line, you know that line that I was talking about earlier where you can tell conditions have changed. It's very faint, just a small little line, sort of like a hair line of where they've grown since I got them. They're so much bigger now. Can you see that line? Maybe not so clear here, maybe if I my finger at the back there, you can sort of see that line. And then this one has grown all the way along there from that line. So this one, as you can tell by the flesh, is just a normal coloured ovum. And um, if he came out, then I'd show you properly, but it's been a bit, bit slow right now and I don't really want to force him awake or anything. But this one has um, white skin and she's not actually an albino, she is a black-eyed um, albino. Uh, but because albino actually don't lack any pigment, you can't really call them a true albino because they've got black eyes so they do have pigment. Um, but yeah, they're just called black-eyed albinos. But it should be a while until I actually see the full size of these guys. But they're actually one of the largest species of giant African land snail. And tiger snails are actually the largest in terms of sort of length, I think. But these ones can get really weighty. A tiger snail is Acatina acatina, by the way. Um, so it's not a Lys acatina, it's its own sort of category as well. So one day, these guys should be even bigger than the reticulata that I showed you earlier. But it could be a few years until we actually see that. Although they are grown a lot faster than I thought they would, so that's always a bonus. And it's obviously also really nice, smooth shell growth. It's gorgeous growth. Gorg oh! Oh no, sorry, that was so scary. I apologise. Because they are called Archicotina marginata ovum, and they're from Nigeria, these are F1, which means first generation from wild caught parents. So the parents would have been found in Nigeria specifically as the sort of locality. It's not part of the species name. Because they are marginata, or otherwise known as Margies. I actually have called this one Marge. And this is Homer from The Simpsons. <laughs> so there they are. Look at little Marge coming out. Little Homer's thinking about it. Let's see if he'll bring his little eyeballs out. Hello. Hello world. 
Thank you to everyone for watching this video. I hope if you wanted to see an update on any of the snails, this provided you with the update. I think it's time to announce the winners of the giveaway from Northern Exotics. Mm -mm, I think like five people entered, so, and it was giving away three packs, so. Um, if you lose, I'm sorry, that's very unlucky for you because you are in with a really good chance. So the winners are just random, um, I've got the names on my phone, let me just go get it. The first winner is Chloe McGarry, the second winner is Liz Jaramillo, and the third winner is Entomology Girl. So if you three could please message me on Instagram with your um, email address, I'll tell Richard and he can send those backgrounds to you to use on your phone. Thanks for watching, please leave a comment down below, hit subscribe and the notification bell if you want to be notified when I next upload. Thanks for watching, bye!